Good morning and welcome to Saturday Psalm Things. This is going to be an epic tasting. Mats is thrilled and delighted to be tasting Lambrusco with me. We were messaging this week, like, what do you want to do on Saturday? I'm like, let's do Lambrusco. And he's like, and like, more Lambrusco. So thanks for participating. I wanted to do Lambrusco because we do actually get a lot of people coming into the store and asking about Lambrusco. And it has a bit of a reputation, which I think is that where you are picking up your emotional reaction to this from. But like back in the 70s, um, Lambrusco was widely imported to the United States, and it was a pretty popular category at that time. Um, Lambrusco itself is, um, well, there's a group of like maybe 60 different Lambrusco varietals. Um, altogether, just labeled as Lambrusco. There's a few different DOC regions within Emilia-Romagna in, in Italy. And Emilia-Romagna is definitely the food capital of Italy. So it's known for Parmigiano, um, balsamic, and what am I forgetting? Um, prosciutto? Prosciutto di Parma. Um, so a really, really popular region for eating, for drinking. And the Lambrusco, the style of wine is usually red. It's slightly sparkling. And it can vary from dry all the way through to sweet. But I think the ones that most people remember are the sweeter styles. Correct. But it always kind of gets trendy. Um, like this is nothing new that we're featuring it today, but lots of restaurants up and down the country globally have featured Lambrusco, especially in the summertime, because it's really good with food, but it's also um, fantastic with charcuterie plates. So if you are picnicking in the park, you've got your cheese, your meat, your bread, your friends, your music, and your can. Um, so starting out with this one, I just love the noise of this because it's really cool. It reminds me of being outside in the sun. So starting out with a Lambrusco. This one comes from our friends at Scarpetta. Um, so this is a wine label that has a local connection. So Bobby Stuckey up at Fresca and I think Lachlan was involved in this too but they started an import company featuring wines from the region of Friuli and this is their wine Lambrusco. in a can. And let's tell our listeners Emilia Romana is in the northeastern part of Italy which is pretty much the home to Lambrusco. Mm -hmm. And some of them are just fantastic. I'm kind of impressed with this smell already That's from right. a can. I'm let's, so proud of you, Mats. Let's <laughs> taste it and see what happens. It's not bad. Is that not bad? That's like a five out of 10 for Mats, see? Um, I like it. I like this one. This is cold. So it's super refreshing. I think I would right. enjoy this in the park. Simple. This comes in a little four-pack can. Um, a lot of the flavors, I think, are very similar between them. So as we go through and taste, it's like um, liquefied plum, as James said. Cranberries, crab apples, mm -hmm. uh, black raspberries. Cherry. Some of the sweeter ones are a little bit Coca-Cola, too. Right. So I think this is popular with... Um, like younger to the market mm -hmm. drinkers who actually prefer a sweeter style. Right. Wrong with it. It's not terribly sweet mm -hmm. and it's perfect for camping, hiking, biking, the pool mm -hmm. yeah. where glass isn't allowed. Yes. I, I would drink this. Yes. I really would. I like it. Or make it into a sangria. Okay. I would drink it by itself. Okay. Um, on these two, I want to re-pour them too because that one thing that I love about Lambrusco is when you pour these, like look at the foam and the color on them. That they're bright purple, and there's something just really super festive about this one. Um, so something with Lambrusco, just to know that a lot of the labeling will be, it was mentioned if they're dry or sweet. So if it says Secco on there, it's going to be a dry one. Amabile is like slightly sweeter, and then there's like full-on Dolce styles. And that refers to or indicates the um, residual sugar in the wine. So the Secco ones will be like maybe 12 to 15 grams per liter. The um, Dolce get all the way up to 50 grams per liter. So there's a big swing in terms of how sweet they are. And some nice food pairings, not to interrupt you, but food pairings with Lambrusco, mm -hmm. I think the most popular would be prosciutto di Parma or <coughs> cured ham. Thanksgiving is big with turkey, cranberries, or cherry pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I finger food like salami. Mm -hmm. Parmesan cheese too. And if it's got a salty and like savory snacky thing. We had um, a dish we did at Quince and it was a pasta. It was like a really toothsome, heavy pasta. And it was done with duck confit. 
and pomegranate seeds. So the pomegranate seeds in there, when that popped, and then you also kind of had that lean fat from the rabbit, but the pop of the pomegranate seed with the frizz that you get from the lambrusco, I thought was really fun and tasty. And they're also very affordable and easy to drink, especially when it's been 100 degrees for the last eight days. And low in alcohol. They're about 10.5% for average, which is really pretty mm. tasty too. Mm-hmm. Do you like the Allegro? I do, because it's nice and dry, crisp, refreshing, absolutely. And it's got a little musical connection too, which I think you can identify. Yes. Um, and the philosophy behind this one is kind of picking up the different elements of musical orchestra, and you know a lot more about music than the rest of us. What did you do in your past life, Mats? I was a concert pianist and harpist. Didn't know that, did you? Surprise! And he's not joking. And you played with friends of mine from Pink Martini, a band. A little trivia for you. So, Mats, the, the mystery. The mystery behind the man, the man behind the mystery. I like it. The All right, man going behind in. Brisco. You are, indeed. Um, so next one, this one, we have a couple of different ones on the shelf. You picked out the dry one. There is also a rosé version, which is a little lighter and brighter and pinker. True. And this is, I think, my favorite of the lineup today. It's a little off dry, tart. See, this one has that much more acidity to right. it. So this would be better with like fatty, fatty meats. Or should it go bacon? Uh, mm. It's just remarkable. I would even go like berry panna cotta as well, it might be fun. Um, Gazpacho, ceviche. Really? Oh yeah, because it has the spice and this would really make the spice very approachable okay. and turn the dynamic on it because it would just cut through the spice right. and the garlic and the seasonings. I have a feeling I might like the sweeter one more with the spicy food. You know, like barbecue, like Korean ribs, things like that. So, okay. Yeah. And the last one. So this is that 90 point seller. So we see this label throughout the store. You want to talk to their concept and what they do? Please, go ahead. <laughs> so 90 plus sellers, there's a labeling. You'll see it through different sections throughout the store. And their intention is to source grapes and then produce wines that are classic for each region and each style. And they're also done at like a pretty affordable price point as right. well. So if you're ever intrigued or interested in trying a wine from a different region you're not familiar with, um, pick these up. It's a good benchmark, and then you can kind of get a little fancier and try other ones from the same region too. Um, this will be the sweetest of them all. Mm -hmm. And this just says rhubarb pie, strawberry pie, summer in a glass. I don't even think that one's even that sweet either. So, hey, I got a surprise for you. Okay. Jump out one of your glasses. What's the surprise? So, oh. it's that Rio Nidi. So this is the brand that kind of took the market by storm. Do you have so, any ice cubes? <laughs> um, I might. So this is the sweet one, and I really want to taste it because we have a lot of people that are big fans of this. They come in, they look for it, they go straight for it, and I've never tasted it. So I figured, who better to taste it with than my buddy Mott's? Yes, and it's under $6 on the shelf. Yes, and do you want ice? You do have ice. I do. How many would you like? A couple cubes. Okay. And ain't no shame of putting ice cubes on your wine, especially mm -hmm. in the summertime. Especially them Brisco. Yeah, pardon my fingers. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I want to taste it without. Oh, it's going to be sweet. <laughs> Delicately sweet. Kind of like caramel, coffee, cherry, raspberry. Jubilee. Raspberry, cherry's jubilee in a glass in the wintertime. All right, so now this one frosts up too. Look at that. Yes. Just like the others. And this would be a great base for sangria. Mm -hmm. Add some brandy, add some sliced fruit. Mm -hmm. I think every wine has its purpose and has its time to shine, and I think I could. I'd, be okay with that. It's so. a cliche, but 
You like what you drink, and you drink what you like. <laughs> Cheese ball. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, consider Lambrusco for your picnic in the park stuff, for appetizer plates as well. There's nothing wrong keeping this in the fridge, keeping it on an ice bucket out on the back patio as you're snacking, having friends over. It's hot out there. Stay cool. Um, cheers, Mont. Thanks for playing. Appreciate you. Absolutely. <laughs>